Hey there, today we're going to be opening up the Sur 6 Max and seeing just how easy it is to upgrade the system. Now one great thing about B-Link systems in general, especially their more recent units, is that they're very easy to access. It's just these four little screws here in the bottom that are very easy to remove. And unlike a company like Minisform, that in some of their systems, what they'll do is they will put these screws underneath rubber feet that you have to destroy. These are pretty much integrated into the already attached rubber feet. So they just have these cutouts and they're very easy to take out. Once you've taken out all of the screws, B-Link also includes this very convenient little rubber tab here that all you have to do is pull on to take out the shroud. Now here we get access to the RAM and SSD cooling fan as well as what it says is the hard drive cage, but this is a lot different than other B-Link units. While it says HDD disk, it actually does not support SATA at all. It actually only has an NVMe slot that you can actually access here. So that does mean that because we have the NVMe here, we don't get access to SATA. Now, I am personally not the biggest fan of these shrouds that B-Link uses for their systems. There are so many screws in a wide variety of different places, and a lot of them are different sizes. You'll have the one screw that is up there by the power plug, then you'll have another very easily visible one down here. Then of course, there's the other one that is next to that one. Now there are two more screws that are a little hard to get to. They are at the corners here. The one at the bottom left corner here is an extremely long one, and this is one of the things that I really don't like about these shrouds and the way that B-Link does them. There was essentially four different sized screws throughout this entire system, and that means that you have to keep track on where they're going to be positioned and all that. Now, the next thing that I really did not like is just how awful it feels to try to pull up this shroud. There are essentially three cables that are attached to this shroud. They're there is the power cable for the fan, there's the power cable for the actual power plug, and then there's a smaller ribbon cable here that actually goes to the NVMe that actually routes underneath the already pre-installed SSD. It feels really, really bad to try to open this thing up, and even worse, when you're actually trying to disconnect anything. This implementation in general is just not one that I am a fan of in the slightest. If you're looking to get one of these systems and all of the opening process process seems like it's not going to be great, I would recommend just choosing the default RAM and SSD capacity that you would like and be happy that you at least get that secondary NVMe slot that you'll be able to utilize. And thankfully, at least that one is easily accessible. One actually neat feature is the fact that the bottom panel actually comes with pre-installed thermal pads and they even have one for the extra NVMe that you can throw in there. Overall, I have to say I'm a little disappointed with how the actual upgrade process was for this system. Specifically, I just really dislike how B-Link does their little shrouds here. This one, especially with the new NVMe ribbon cable, makes it extremely difficult to actually fully take off the bottom panel and you feel like you could just damage something. I would say that if you're not someone that is comfortable with messing around with the internals of non-standard computers, I would recommend maybe considering other options in terms of a system or already buy it pre-configured which is really what I recommend more, just buy it pre-configured and then upgrade with that secondary NVMe slot. I'm actually happy to see that they're including a secondary NVMe. M.2 SSDs at this point have pretty much just become standard. And while you can get some decent capacities on SATA SSDs for relatively decent prices, most SATA based SSDs at this point have transitioned over to QLC and it's becoming harder and harder to actually find decently priced SATA SSDs that are actually of decent quality. With NVMe, you could avoid a lot of those problems. But anyways, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next one.